Look, I need a shot, no chase. My girl need a wine and a steak. My mom need a house for the late. So I got some money to make. They told me I got what it take. So I gotta take it all back. I told them I need my pay. I need my 50 for taste. I done ran low on my patience. Make sure my time isn't wasted. I told them all that I've been real. They know that I cannot face shit. Funny how none of this makes sense. Now that I'm up with an A list. She tryna throw me the K now. Telling me happy belated. Got too much shit on my mind. I told my mom I'm fine. I told my girl that I'm stressed. But I'm gonna make it on time. I pray to God for these signs. He know I'm harder than try. Lately I'm looking for real shit. The things that my money can't buy. They don't understand how the shit goes. How do y'all use it? Yo guys, what's up? We have just arrived to the beautiful Go For Games Casino in Olomouc, which is kind of my home casino. Uh, I'm playing the monthly main events here and also some side events throughout the month. It's the closest casino to where I live and they are hosting some nice events on basically weekly basis but they have this monthly main event that I'm attending. Uh, I actually had a nice score last year, I think it was in July. We basically made a five-way uh, chip chop and I cashed for 12k. And yeah, we are here once again. This time it's gonna be a 2,000 check rounds buy-in which is approximately 90 bucks, I think. And I think it's a classic 1 million check crown guarantee which is once again, I think 45k. Uh, so yeah, great structure, 30 minute levels, uh, it's a two day event, today is Friday, I'm gonna be playing day 1B, uh, final day is on Sunday. Once again, I'm gonna do my best to vlog as much as I can, I just received an approval, so hopefully we can get some nice footage and hopefully we can run good and make day 2, so stay tuned, I will keep you guys updated. Poker Fever main event begins, ladies and gentlemen, 30k starting stack, 30 minute levels, I have plenty of experience with this particular tournament and I always look forward to play it, so let's see what goes down this month. The first significant hand I play is this one right here. I look down at Queen 10 off and I open 3x from MP2. MP3 calls, button calls and both of the blinds call as well. Flop comes Queen, 10, 9 with two clubs. Small blind folds his hand right away and big blind quickly checks. I fire a seabed of 11 big blinds. I go with a bigger sizing to squeeze out as much value as I can from the flush jaws, queen x and jack x hands. MP3 folds, button folds and big blind quickly checks his cards and then calls. The turn is the five of clubs. Big blind checks and I check as well. Mainly to put control against flushes but looking back I think I should keep on betting I don't really like my check here. The river is the 10 of diamonds. The big blind fires for 22 big blinds. I tank for a while and then raise to 70 big blinds, hoping that he has the flush. Big blind tanks for a while and then folds, so he most likely did not have the flush, but it doesn't matter, I still win a nice sized pot. Second level of the day, I'm in the hijack with ace king off. There's an under the gun limp and a huge 7.5 big blind raise from MP1. I'm sitting there with ace king, thinking about whether I should 3 bet or just call. If I 3 bet, I would have to go super large, I'd say somewhere between 20 to 25 big blinds, and then if he 4 bets, I would have to make a tough decision for a majority of my stack. If I call, I will have a position on him and the under the gun player too if he decides to tag along. The second option seemed like a better one, I don't have to get crazy preflop this early into the tournament, so I went with a call. Button asks the dealer if the race is really 7.5 big blinds and then he 3 bets to 20 big blinds. Under the gun limper falls and then the MP1 4 bet jams all in for more than 100 big blinds. Given the action, I think this is a clear fault. The only time I would ever consider calling here is if I had a specific read on the guy who's all in. So I fold and Button eventually ends up folding as well and he shows jacks and MP1 shows jacks as well. So they both had jacks, which was a bit surprising to be honest. I thought that at least one of them is gonna have a monster, queens, kings, aces or at least ace king suited but that wasn't the case, as you can see. Few hands later, I'm in the cutoff with Pucket Tens. MP3 opens to 2.5 big blinds, is the same guy who just went all in in the previous hand that you just saw. Hijack raises to 7.5 big blinds, and I think about it for a while and then decide to go with a call. The action falls back to the original opener and he jams all in for over 100 big blinds once again. 
hijack tanks for a while and fold and I fold as well. Once again, I don't see a reason why I should risk my tournament life this early. It's pretty similar to the Ace-King offhand, it's just too early and we are too deep to take these spots. One level later, I'm on the big blind with Packet Queens 60 big blinds deep. The aggro guy from the previous hand is on the small blind and limps. I see this as a great opportunity to squeeze out as much as I can from him. And before I race, I deliberately ask him how many chips he has behind. I do that mainly to remind him about his stack, to plant a seed in his mind, for him to be aware that he has less than a starting stack. Because I think that that was the main factor why he was playing so aggro in the previous hands. He still has over 60 big blinds at this point, which is plenty of big blinds, but in his mind he doesn't have a big stack. As you saw, he even had 100 big blinds plus when he went all in earlier. So my observation was that he wasn't happy that he had less than a starting stack and he was just nervous that he's below the starting stack for some reason. So once I planted the seed, I went for a race and once again, I deliberately went bigger than I normally would and I made it 6.25 big blinds. Two reasons. The first one is to extract as much value as I can pre-flop from all the hands that he limped with. As we saw, he likes to play, so I think he's calling with almost everything he limped with. The second reason is to make the possibility of him limp jamming or limp raising even more lucrative in his eyes since I made such a huge raise. He thinks about it for a while and then calls. The flop comes jack, three, deuce, all spades. He checks and once again I'm thinking how can I extract as much value as I can. Big C bet makes huge sense so I go for it and I bet 10 big blinds. He thinks about it for a while and then eventually ends up folding. But this hand is a perfect example of how important it is to play exploitatively against bad players. If I went with a classic 3 to 4 x raise preflop, I would make 50% less chips than I actually made. So squeezing that extra 50% is so crucial in the long term when you play against those type of players. All right, here goes my favorite hand of this tournament. It's level seven, I'm 41 big blinds deep and I receive aces. I open to 2.5 big blinds. The guy on my left three bets to 6.6 .6 big blinds. So I'm pretty thrilled to see that. And now the question is, to slow play or to not slow play. The guy seemed pretty aggro. He was a chip leader at some point as well. I'm out of position. So if I check on the flop, there's a high chance that he will see bet. Everything just seemed lined up for a nice sneaky slow play. So I went for it. The flop comes six, three, eight rainbow. I continue with my slow play, of course, and I check just as I planned. My opponent reaches for his chips and goes for almost a pot sized bet. So there's 30 big blinds in the pot. I've got approximately 35 big blinds behind. Mission accomplished. It looks like he has a strong pair as well. I don't think there's a reason to continue slow playing our hand. If I just call, it will look insanely strong. So I go all in and he snap calls. I show him aces. He shows me kings. So I end up in a dream scenario. Now I need to dodge the remaining two kings in the deck. The turn is the 10 of clubs and the river is the four of diamonds. So I hold and I get a huge double up to 85 big blinds. Buckle up, ladies and gentlemen, we are about to go on a nice winning streak, three hands in a row. It all begins with ace king off on the big blind. I face an open from MP2. I three bet to 6.6 .6 big blinds. MP2 tanks for a while and then falls. In the next hand, I'm on the small blind with king 10 off. The action falls to me and I limp. Big blind checks. The flop comes ace king eight rainbow. I lead for one big blind and big blind falls instantly. That's two in a row. In the next hand, I look down at ace jack off on the button. Under the gun, the guy we three betted before with ace king opens to 2.3 big blinds and I three bet him to 6.6 .6 big blinds once again. He tanks for a while, gives me a look of stop three betting me bro and then eventually folds. So yeah, nice little sequence there for us. 
One level later, the last level until the registration closes, I get Pucky Jack's 50 big blinds deep. There's an under the gun limp and I raise to 2.8 big blinds. The guy next to me instantly 3 bets to 7.5 big blinds. Under the gun limper falls and I call with my Pucky Jacks. The flop comes Ace King Queen with two clubs, so I miss completely and I check and my opponent fires C bet instantly and I fold. And that right there was the last proper hand I've played for a few more levels. The late situation was over now. I did a lot of folding, a lot of balancing between 15 to 20 big blind stack, jamming when needed, stealing when needed. And then finally, at level 13, I get a playable hand on the big blind. Our beloved ace king off. Small blind 3x opens and I jam my 12 big blinds. He calls instantly. I show him ace king off. He shows me bucket jacks. So we have ourselves a proper coin flip. Let's see if I can get there. Unfortunately, no ace, no king, so we are out of the tournament. Yo guys, what's up? It's currently 1.45 a.m. and we have just arrived to the studio. I'm gonna be spending the night here and I actually gotta wake up super early tomorrow. It's my little nephew's birthday and I'm gonna be traveling to my brother's city. Uh, so yeah, I gotta wake up at like 7 a.m. Uh, so I'm gonna be spending the night at the studio. It's actually been a while since I've slept here. If you remember the streaming days, uh, I basically used to live in this uh, studio. Uh, so I mean, it's you know a little bit of nostalgia to be back. Uh, and yeah, guys, thank you so much for watching. Uh, we lost the flip, Ace King against Jax, as you saw. But besides that, I'm pretty happy with the, with the way we played. I'm also uh, happy about the fact that I'm actually finally able to record at this casino. As I said, I'm there every month, uh, sometimes even more than uh, once per month for the main event. I'm also playing some side events here and there. So yeah, it's awesome that we have the permission to film uh, my new system with the phone. You know, it's super low key and I just, yeah, super, super easy for me to execute and the casino is okay with it as well. So pretty thrilled about that. Shout out to uh, the go for games staff. And as I said, unfortunately, I won't be able to fire any more bullets. Tomorrow are another two flights. But as I said, I'm away and I won't make it in time. So yeah, just simple and easy today uh, or this month, uh, just one bullet. We didn't make it, it's okay, we'll be back next month. So guys, once again, thank you so much for watching and stay tuned for another vlog. It will be here very soon. And don't forget, Bitcoin is very accepted here. Very much accepted. The next day, my brother convinced me to play a $30 buy-in at his home casino and I ended up beating the field of 50 players and I shipped the whole thing for 17k check crowns, which is approximately 800 bucks. It was a small one, but still, you know, it's always nice to win tournaments, especially live tournament. So yeah, little confidence booster to close out this month. I'm looking forward to play some live tournaments again next month. And as I said, I will vlog the journey as much as I can. Once again, thank you so much for watching. I will see you very soon with another vlog.